Festival, I entered a couple poems um, to perform. I'm doing the not quite a slam, I don't think you'd call anything that R.S. Thomas is something based off of R.S. Thomas poetry, quite a poetry slam, but it was a reading of many poets um, uh, giving their responses to some of his poems. And so one of them that I entered was called The Learners I Stedvod. It's based off of my experience at the um, National I Stedvod that happened last month and me spending the entire week or almost 10 days at the festival with my brain being stretched trying to learn Welsh and listened to all the different accents and the people who had uh, the, the poets who were speaking way over my head way too fast and um, in the accents that I didn't understand. Anyway, it was a great experience in Welsh language, but it also brought about this poem, which is not in Welsh except for a few words here and there. Um, I do use, it, it begins with Shara Kabak, speak Welsh. I do, I do. Um, and then uh, has mention of the word hoyle, which has quite a bit of meaning. It's pub hoyle is a way to say um, goodbye and kind of like, uh, you know, blessings going with you almost type of thing. Hoyle can mean fun and it also has a deep connotation within religious literature of being a movement of the spirit. Um, the old preachers would have the hoyle come upon them. So it's a, a word with all kinds of context and meaning. Um, and then I use the words erhen i aith hir, um, the um, old, long language. And it echoes uh, from the word hiraith, which is a longing, which is a uh, uniquely Welsh word that is longing, particularly for home and uh, more specifically for Wales. So these are a Paul apart. Oh, and the words tide, a nine, which is grandma and grandpa. These are uh, found in my poem as well. And as a response to an R.S. Thomas poem, um, I, I was responding to a poem called The Other. And I paraphrase some of his words because the other in this context was God. God was that great other. And, um, and it, uh, it references our prayers breaking upon him. Now I'm turning this as the Welsh, Welsh kapal in Caer Salem uh, here in Carnarvon. Uh, their prayers are breaking upon me as a learner who needs to become fluent in Welsh. And I have a number of people helping me and praying with me about that. So um, this poem, uh, for those who have been to the Eisteddfod, many of these things will all seem oh too familiar, um, almost in a humorous way. You have to forgive my sniffing. I'm got a terrible runny nose from allergies today. Uh, but uh, if if you haven't been to it, some of them might not make sense to you. But this is through the eyes of the learner. This is called <clears throat> the learners. I step on. Should I come back? I do, I say. But it's barely true. One clumsy American, 100,000 Celtic warriors, faces painted blue, or so I imagined, but 
it's only tied, a nine, and snotty Johnny Bach crying in the rain. Dewey lifts his cup, baptizes the night in bitters. Rhiannon dons the holy national garb, wellies and short shorts. A squabble of pubescent poets whistle and squawk around Rhiannon as she floats on mud and plastic pavements. Despite the chiming of her birds, no one living slept that night. The rains came hard, sanctified our canvas homes, and everything we owned was dipped in wind and water. This is my immersion. A festival of song and strange tongues far from my home of sun and surf. In the pavilion, a domesticated rebellion, the dream of crowns and thrones. We clap the sword of peace. Does Bakhtin observe bemused from heaven as we inaugurate this formal carnival with robed and solemn clowns? Back at the old Welsh Kapel, their prayers break upon me. Not just for these few hours, nor for the days, but for the years, for eternity. This is my home now, my Jerusalem. Yet I will wake tomorrow, still that other, a stranger in this land of song and hoyle, and soft sorrows framed in er hen eith here. Shara Kamraik? Adu, I say, leaning in. The second poem that I read was in response to <clears throat> R.S. Thomas' poem uh, called The Lesson and these particular words. Return, migrant, so your listeners, arising on some May morning of the spirit, may hear you whistling again softly. Um, this is from the lesson, and uh, my, my response to this, these words, uh, was actually a poem I written quite some time ago in my uh, ongoing plan to try and write as many sonnets as Shakespeare which is like 154, and I'm probably 120 uh, sonnets in on that uh, long project. This is sonnet number five. This God unseen, he hides beneath the robes of cloud and sky and cracking thunderous nights. Behind the starry skies and sun's stiff light, and winds that blow toward edge of curve of globe, he ever moving hides and then disrobes, a ghost who moves from in to out of sight. He hides, I seek, I hide, he seeks each night, and then upon hope's door I pierce my lobe. I slave my ear to hear, my eyes to see, my mouth to cry and supplicating groans. I go to search, but stay to find my way. In paradox, in slavery, I am free. To see, to hear, to cry these baleful moans, which celebrate the loss the find each day. Hey.